Hello everybody. This is the video I promised last time, a review of the... Oh wait, what is that doing in the video? And it's gone. No plans for other silly objects in the video just because of the sakes of the video. So, my now beloved Polyant Tracker and review at least my feelings on using it for like a week, um, especially the first couple of days. I worked on it a lot to get to know it. Created uh, a few tracks just to learn the basics of building up a track within this device. And discovered a few, a few things that I th think could have been better. And we'll maybe get here with uh, future updates or something. And I discovered um, a lot of things that I really like in this incredible, small packaged, but huge machine instrument. Machine instrument. Okay, machine instrument. So here we go. First of all, navigating the uh, interface was way easier than I thought it was. Let me switch it on as well. Um, at first I didn't understand what these did, but when I did, you see I'm used to workflows where you select something and have to press confirm or enter button at some point to confirm your choice and this just switches instantly. I didn't understand why I couldn't get effects on notes until I read a little bit up and I noticed that you have to keep it pressed to do that. Uh, what I like about the effects is that if you add an effect here, let's say we do a panning here. Oh, wait, idiot. We do a panning here. When I go to the next one and I touch it, it'll also get to use the, the effect that you just used, but I don't know why it doubles in value here. I, I haven't found a pattern in it, but I've noticed that if you, you can quickly repeat the same effect to different notes, but they get a different value and I don't know where it gets it, but it's totally fine because you can of course easily adjust here. I think it must be possible, but I haven't tested it yet to uh, copy just the effect. In fact, let me simply try. Yes, you can. So that makes it easier. I, I did that with notes, but I haven't done it with effects yet. Okay, great. So the copy paste function is very handy. Also very practical. It's just these two buttons, copy and shift to paste. Perfect. So um, that's about the interface with these four buttons that are major. What I liked as well is the ease to sample. The sample recorder is so easy to work with, it's incredible. I just um, got up from sampling um, one of my older synths, a few sounds that I want to use, and it's just so easy, and it detects that you haven't pressed the key immediately, so it suggests the crop. Love it, perfect. Radio function is fun, however, a little bit um, limited in my situation, because over here in this country, there's not many FM stations anymore and then of course um, now i'm um, all the way in the attic of the house if i go down in the living room then it's even more limited because of the structure of these houses very um, concretey buildings um, to create a song perfectly easy i had already seen this in several videos this, so i understood that it wasn't going to be hard. Um, I have to say though, it would have been easier if you could uh, do a pattern choice with the dial, which you can't, or with the cursor keys, which you can't, which is understandable because you use them to navigate to the different positions there. What I also noticed is that you can actually go here and delete this track, but it deletes it from the pattern, not from the song, because the song is just patterns uh, chained together. So beware, because I did this thinking that in the song a certain pattern would play, but without this track, a specific track, 
and then I discovered that it had deleted the track from my pattern. Don't know if it's intentional in the software, but if you use it, be aware. Um, something I had to learn was to the switch between green and red, of course. If you own a tracker, you know exactly what I mean. Um, especially when working with notes like here. This did selections, tried to delete them, got frustrated, didn't delete, or, and then when I had it here, I didn't know at first that if it's on uh, FX1 here, and I want to delete FX2, then it doesn't, it <laughs> deletes the one that's selected. So the colored uh, um, rectangle in the, in your, spreadsheet cell, if I may say so, is the one that's selected. So that's what you're deleting. Which is very practical, but was a little bit of a learning curve for me. One other thing that I didn't understand at first, but I figured out after a little while, is how to switch between, uh, how to switch to an instrument and then get it to play chromatically uh, over here on the pads, which was something that puzzled me at first. I didn't understand how to switch to it, even though I had used it uh, before, but I didn't know how I got there. So, of course, um, you may already know this, if you're uh, in the instrument mode, you have your, currently I'm building, I just started building something yesterday, there's only two instruments here, two samples. Choose one, just by pressing it, press the note button, and now you have it chromatically here. Incredibly simple, but you have to know in order to, to use it. Um, sample loader, um, it's um, easy, I think it's fine, but if I go and if I am, I just added a sample here, and I go to, let's say, recordings, first of all, this is very odd, the enter button is here, and I would expect it here, because computer keyboards, but okay, it works. Now you can go and add, but then it doesn't jump to the next three slots, so you cannot quickly add, add, add. Now I have to do one little test here because I think, ah, it's the add next button that does it. I, uh, I had this in mind to tell you in the video, but at this morning I saw a video of somebody doing using this add next button, which I hadn't figured out what it was for yet. So that's the solution to, to this one. Very nice. This works perfectly. There's a few things I uh, I don't like about it. If you're here and you want to get out to a different folder, then you have to go all the way up and enter, which is logical, but impractical. I would have liked to have an option to go to the top immediately or get a function somewhere saying, go one folder back. Could be, could be really easy. Something else that I uh, didn't really, um, that I don't really understand is this. Now, if I play, then I see my different volumes here, of course. And if you have several, of course, you will see more. And I can mute them here. Can be very handy, but I haven't really used that yet. But what I cannot do here is change the volume slider and I don't know if it's my idiocy or it's simply not in the software but I haven't been able to find it and I went through the manual and the help pages on the polyhand site and I couldn't find it and it would be super practical if that was here because then you could easily influence of course the volume of each track now you can still influence the volume of each track of course because you can do that in the instrument parameters but then you don't have the graphical overview of the other volumes, so you'll need to do the processing in your head of which one should be lower relative to another one. That's something that I don't understand why it's not there. So I'm uh, maybe it is there, but it's hidden, and I have to uh, press a magic key combination to get it working, or um, it'll come in a future update. I hope so, because it would be really, really practical to have that. Also, it took a little while to find out that this has several pages. 
says so here, but I didn't notice at first. I thought that one, two meant that there was another row coming, which there isn't, <laughs> of course. But now it's you switch to the next page with the same button as you used before. If you know it, then it works fine. Now, now we're in here. What I really, really, really like is the panning LFO. That is so practical to have it in here. Because of course you can do it on a per node basis. This is super handy to do it here. With step divisions, uh, as it, it is supposed to be an LFO, it has different um, waveforms and it works perfectly. It is very nice. So that's great. Also about the instrument parameters having several pages, of course, the master also has it, which took also took a while to figure out for me. <laughs> it has actually three, as you can see, or if you have one, you already know, of course. Oh yeah, something that I um, read in the manual is that you can actually use the line in to um, put audio signal in that is playing even a sequence through the MIDI that's going out of this box and then have it um, use the reverb as well, which is, I haven't tried it yet, I don't know if, but, but it'll of course, oops, that was the camera, sorry, that'll of course um, mix the external audio in with all the audio blasting out of this machine. So, how did I create my first songs? Well, first of all, I was of course confined to this little box now and I have given myself the challenge of creating the first tracks with, uh, without using any of my gear that's here that you can see, because my gear that's there. <laughs> um, so I went with this machine only and plugged in the headphone. I downloaded some samples from the internet and I used some uh, of, of, of the demo tracks that are in here from different artists. I used samples from there to create my first tracks, uh, my first patterns and song, just to learn the basics of it and so on and so forth. And a couple of things, of course, that took a little while to start to understand is that you can use the uh, ADSR for volume, let me go there, that's here, the, yeah, the envelope, um, that you can use that to sample just a very short waveform sound or whatever and then shape it into the sound that you want it to be. Um, very interesting. Um, took a little while to understand how that works. And then of course, if you're using loops, which I started doing uh, when I was building the second, my second, uh, well, piece of music on this, um, I noticed that uh, even after um, a pattern has played, if the loop if, uh, is longer than that, and you have the release s somewhere, then it'll continue playing which also, uh, if you chain the patterns together into a song, they, it will bleed over in the next pattern, which sometimes can be uh, great, sometimes can be annoying, especially if you're using drum loops, it's annoying, because it shouldn't bleed into the next one. And then I, um, it took me uh, a while to figure out how to tell uh, in a pattern, how to tell a played note to stop which is of course the off parameter here. I discovered it because I uh, started recording uh, live. Use if you press the rec rec uh, record and play button at the same time, it'll give you a live uh, recording option in the sequencer and it does it for you. And that's how I discovered how that works. Um, and this was something in my head. I was um, a little bit, uh, in the beginning, I was a little bit, uh, not maybe not annoyed, but uh, disappointed that I was really confined to the different steps here. Because of course, if you start adding notes uh, using this editor like so, then, see, I can go here, 
and add notes, of course. But they're all exactly one step. And I was worried that I wouldn't be able to make more flowing pads, um, ambient type um, progressions and all that stuff. I've seen people do it in videos, so I knew it had to be possible. It had to be, uh, yeah, it had to be possible. But it took a little while to discover how to get that done. It does work, though, perfectly. And of course, if you use the instrument parameters to um, set uh, panning, but also go into effects here, then in the master section you also have to. Um, open the effects in order for them to work just like in a mixing board where you have your effect send and return you can set the send for an instrument for a track but you still have to feed back the mixed signal so that was a little bit uh, something a little something to find out as well and then something that I also um, uh, see as a point that could be better is I can't seem to go into the sample editor. Oh, I can. Let me see. Yeah, I, I can. So that's not right. I can actually go here and crop the sample afterwards. Okay, never mind. I When I first started using the sample recorder, I noticed that I can do the cropping immediately because it suggests your crop. And then I, later I said to myself, well, if I go into the sample editor, I cannot load another sample to edit. So I figured, I thought I, would, uh, it wasn't, I wasn't able to do that, but I am, so never mind it. I haven't used performance yet. Of course, I've used the file menu because I've opened, saved, and exported uh, thingies. Oh yeah, and then the export function. There is an export function, of course, that allows you to export the song to uh, audio but because the main the master mixer page here doesn't have the volume setting you have to um, export the song to the SD card take the SD card out copy it to let's say your computer listen to it and then find out that the mixing level is borked it's something I think could be better. This would really be a good, a great add-on. But the export works perfectly. I haven't done any of the other things because I don't have any other software hardware that can that uses stems. So, and I don't know what the export pattern does. I think it just generates a file that can be read by other by tracker software. So it's probably not something I will use often. But the export song function could be, um, well, is actually really usable. But you can't quickly uh, go back, change the volume of the different instruments and then export it again. And of course, uh, depending on what kind of a headset or speakers you use, when you create your stuff, it will sound differently when exported and played on another device. So you have to keep that in mind also in how you mix. But that's of course something that is in your mind and in your ears. You can you learn that if you when you're going along. Other than that, I love this device. The choice to make these buttons um, the really hardware clicky buttons, great choice because it really gives you that clear feedback of what you're doing. It is so practical. So that's my first week with the Polyant Tracker. I am on software version 1.5. I think that must be visible uh, somewhere here, firmware 1.5, which recently came out. It was, uh, as I uh, uh, showed in the first video, it was, um, I received it with 1.4. Updating it is super easy. They did a great job there. There's no connecting it to a computer and then running some software and then the software doesn't detect it and whatever, as I had with, for instance, my MicroFreak. Not with the latest software update though, but the previous one, uh, my uh, MicroFreak uh, would not be recognized by the computer no matter what I did. And I did that on a brand spanking new computer as well. Um, I did contact Arturia then, I got uh, somebody from support re responding back to me. 
and in the end uh, I got a couple of tips and uh, was asked to try again but in the end I was sent um, a script to run in DOS and that updated the microfreak. Uh, they fixed this issue though but because the latest software version that came out I was able to update it using the software but it is so practical that you just download the firmware file put it on uh, the SD card or even another a different SD card and then just say update here and choose the one you, you don't have to remove the older one so if you want to you can always go back to an older version which could be practical if Polyant does something wrong and um, introduces a couple of bugs in the, in the release so you can choose to go back to the previous version until they fix that and it literally I think it took 20 seconds so it seems to be a very well put together device software and hardware play nice together so I think that's enough for now I did prepare um, uh, one little piece and I will just introduce it to you now so you can see what I've done after a couple of days of working with this little device Hope you like it. If you uh, have been uh, watching, thank you very much. I hope to see you in the next video. There's some other videos coming up as well, but I will um, continue making content around the tracker because it's such a magical little device and I keep thinking of new tricks that I could try and do. Thanks for hanging around. Um, hope you enjoyed the track. See you in the next video. Be well, guys.